Hi everybody, uh, welcome to our discussion on this uh, topic which is uh, lasers. Uh, friends, we would like to uh, talk about the paragraph 5 of uh, this standard uh, in this particular section where we look at the recognition exemptions available for a party where it does not need to recognize uh, the uh, you know the leased asset and the and the corresponding lease liability in the balance sheet but it can take the exemption route so one of the exemptions which is available is a, a short-term lease my standard says a lease a lessee may elect not to apply the requirements of the standard to for example a short-term lease okay so what is a short-term lease per se because unless we understand the meaning of that my my, my accounting would not be would not be appreciated right so the short term lease is anything or any lease or any lease term of 12 months or less all right now the meaning of a lease term is you know given later in the standard so let's not worry about it but as of now what we are saying is the lease term of 12 months of less means that if i decide to get into a lease period of 11 months and 29 days this would be an example of of course a short term lease all right so effectively what we are saying is that in this particular case an entity may have a discretion to not show an asset and the corresponding lease liability if the lease term is of 11 months or less right of course it creates a business risk but at the same time we are saying that yes to that extent if i'm able to you know at the end of every 11 months 29 days if i'm able to extend the lease further as as if as if i'm negotiating back with my lesser once again and i keep in keep on doing it you know throughout the throughout the life of the asset i still do not recognize that asset in my balance sheet okay and of course the corresponding liability is also ignored for the purposes of balance sheet recognition and that is what is the exemption route we are talking about okay now importantly we are saying that an entity may elect of course it means that that the exemption is not mandatory right you have a choice to for example not avail this if you want to show even a short term lease as a part of your balance sheet and, and uh, you know balance sheet uh, with your uh, asset and the liability in the balance sheet you are welcome to do that okay now what we are saying further is we look at this exemption is available to the class of assets right which means we are essentially referring to the grouping of similar assets which may be given this kind of a lease exemption okay now importantly what we are saying here is that while we say a lease term of 12 months of less this recognition is always made this identification is always made at the inception of lease which means that for example if my original lease term for example let's say let's say is 13 months right let's say this ex this this lease term is later on reduced to 10 months time okay so the moment it says 13 months at the inception but later on reduced the contract is already in place and is reduced to 10 months time this exemption cannot be availed because this exemption is only available at this starting point, not at a later point. Okay, right? So, when I say I'm looking at this precise short term lease, let's try to understand in a more practical manner in terms of what could be the repercussions of this, what could be the consequences of this. Okay, we are saying now.
my original lease term right is for 10 months okay plus there is an extension option of additional six months okay so there's a minimum lease period of 10 months time and the extension option of an additional six months now in this case what we are saying is that at the inception at the start if there is a reasonable certainty okay if there is a reasonable assurance that this option will be exercised okay it means that the total lease term for the purposes of accounting shall be actually 16 months and therefore this exemption will not be available okay so when i when i say what could be an example of this is that uh, the resource says use this asset for 10 months time and you can use it for another six months, uh, additional six months by paying you know 10% uh, of the market rate 10% of the market renters or maybe you can avail that asset uh, for your business use uh, for for without you know without any consideration now when i said this is the case it, it's it's reasonable certain at the, at the starting point itself that the option will be exercised okay however in the same case if after end of the six months the lessee has to renegotiate with the lessor and uh, the only way for example you know the negotiations would happen is uh, that uh, you know the, the the lessee and the lessor would probably want to agree upon a market rate you know or, or a rate which is which is arising or which is uh, you know which is which is lying on on that particular date after 10 months of time which means that well the options exercising or extension option is not reasonably certain okay if my lease contract says that use this asset for 10 months time and after 10 months of time we will uh, you know give you an option to uh, use the asset for next six months but at 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 those rates which which exist at at that point in time post six uh, post 10 months of time so it is not reasonably certain that the option will be exercised or it will not be exercised okay so from that perspective you need to be very very clear about it so this this very exemption can be a tricky affair for companies when they are you know to say you know getting into the contractual details and try to understand basically whether whether the exemption can be availed or not right i think one of the one of the reasons why why this exemption was was an optional exemption was uh, so that so that people could still apply you know the 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 accounting as per as per the uh, the new standards requirement that is showing the asset uh, the right of use asset as well as the lease liability in the balance sheet but having said that of course for 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 the cost benefit analysis this exemption exists okay now one more thing that i want to kind of talk about precisely is that when we have For example, a short term lease like this, 10 months time. And then after 10 months of time, another lease contract, let's say after 10 months or any time before 10 months okay which was not expected to be the case prior so in this case any any modification to the existing contract shall be considered as a new lease arrangement okay so what i what i intend to say here is that let's say in this case 
I started my lease contract on 1st of January 19, okay? And it is due to be completed on 31st of October 19, okay? So my original lease term is 10 months. However, on 1st of August 19, that is like seven months from the original date, I modify my, my lease term. There is a negotiation that took place, nothing anticipated prior to that. But on 1st of August, I decide to, let's say, you know, uh, uh, cancel this contract and want to, you know, get into a new contract. Or the other way to look at it is I want to extend this lease period uh, for another, let's say, you know, six months maybe. Okay, so seven months are already gone by and I'm going for six months from, from 31st of January 19, which means that my new lease maturity date comes at six months from here, which is like November, December, January, February, March, April, which is like 30th of April to zero right so i would count what is this starting period up to this date right so this could be another short term lease for me because it's as good as a new contract in place per se okay so precisely when i look at all this requirements around it we are saying that be be clear about what appears to be you know uh, a short term lease and what may not be a short term lease in some some instances the final final takeaway on this is that any lease let me use the board here any lease with the purchase option right with a reasonable certainty that the purchase option will be exercised is actually considered as a long term lease. Okay, I'm taking a machine on hire for six months, but after six months of time, I have an option to buy it. Quite sure I will, which means that that lease is not a short term lease. It is always going to be accounted for as a long term lease which means mandatorily show that asset the right of use asset and the corresponding liability in your balance sheet there right so that's something i wanted to talk about on this particular exemption of the paragraph 5 of the standard shall be discussing more stuff with you on the same thing other exemption in the in the future set of videos so thank you very much good day and take care bye